Hi, and welcome back to yet another video. This is the sixth episode of the story about the time when the world believed that the Uzumaki were extinct and completely forgot about them. After years of laying low, they will re-emerge and make themselves known again to deliver vengeance to those who sought to destroy their family. Being descendants of the sage, it is also their task to keep the balance in the world by peace and war. After you've finished watching, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Let's get started, so it is official then. They're back. Sarutobi thought. I wonder. Do they know about Konoha's betrayal? If not, there is a chance for Konoha to ally itself with the Uzumakis once again. Thought Donzo. No. They're supposed to be dead. Fugaku thought angrily. The Uchiha clan shall be their last clan standing. We have successfully wiped out the Sinjuo. I'm going to do everything I can to completely wipe out the Uzumakis. Troublesome. More meetings will sure come after this. Narashikaku thought. The fire daimyo merely watched the Leaf Council sit in silence as they absorbed the latest news. There's more to that. It was not only the wave daimyo who came to the meeting but the rice daimyo and leader of the village we used to know as a Migakur as well. There's another? Asked the Hokage. Yes. The rice daimyo have informed us that they also now have their own shinobi village, which is called Otogakur. Their country will be now called the Land of Sound instead the Land of Rice. Who's their leader? Asked Homura. The Snake Sonin, Orochimaru. More gasps. He's the Otokage now. His past crime for being a missing nin will be now forgiven. Any form of threat against him or the Land of Sound will be considered an act of war. HMPF. Even if that happens, they will easily lose since they have just constructed. Scoffed Koharu. That, my dear elder, is where you are wrong. The Land of Sound have been established six years ago, and finally chose to make itself known this morning. Donzo then chose to ask something he had been wondering about since earlier. Daimyo-sama, if you'll excuse me, what was that you were talking about Amiga Kour? Ah, uh, yes. That. Thank you for asking. I almost forgot about that. Hee <laughs> hee. Anyway, the land of rain as we know it is no longer called by that name. It is now a part of Ozushio Gakur. A lot more gasps. The current Ozukage is an Uzumaki survivor who goes by the name Pain. Almost six years ago, he along with his followers managed to win a civil war. Civil war? Ah, uh, yes. You do not know about the civil war. Amiga Kur have closed itself from the outside world and kept things to itself, keeping outsiders away. The security was very high that time. As I was saying, the country was torn apart by a civil war. One side was Hanzo the Salamanders while the other one was Payne's. After gaining the support of majority of the village, Payne finally decided to end the tyranny rule once and for all. He easily defeated Hanzo on a one-on-one -on -one battle in front of everyone. After that, Amiga Kur strengthened its barriers to keep the outside world unaware of what was happening inside. The village rebuilt itself from being a wasteland. The same year Rotogakura was founded, the civil war in Amei ended. During the meeting this morning, the Ozukage have made its appearance. He along with the Wave Daimyo, or as we call him now, the Whirlpool Daimyo, explained to us why there were two Azushio Gakurs. The one that was the former Amiga Kur is still a closed city. They explained that that is where they train their Shinobis and where other military related subjects were. The other Azushio Gakur which is located in Wave, is where we find most of its civilians. There will be a number of Shinobi stationed there but most of them are in Ame. Now, to remove the confusion, they told us to simply call the former Amiga Kur Azushio Gakur's third city while the former Wave be called Azushio Gakur's fourth city. Why third and fourth? They say the first city was built and was abandoned before the first shinobi war. The second city was the one destroyed during the Kumo Iwa Kari Alliance's attack. You might be wondering why they are separated. The reason is to keep the civilians away from harm in case of war. The wave daimyo told us that should any form of threat befall upon the fourth city, the third city will throw everything against those responsible. Before anything foolish come into your heads, I must warn you not to do anything against Ozu Shiogakoer. Now that I believe I have told you everything. I will take my leave. After the daimyo left, Donzo, Hiruzin, Jiraiya, and Fugaku shared looks, silently scheduling for a secret meeting. Time skip, three days later Azoshiogaku Azoshiogaku shorelines this year's graduates along with the other Chaiyunins, Jounins, and Storm were currently waiting for their leader to address them. Three days ago, Naruto informed the Yozukage about their team finally having found Yuki no Kuni's missing princess. A council meeting had been called immediately. After the meeting, the squad that was deployed in snow had been informed of what was going to happen. For the past two days, 
Capable personnel from the main city up to the fourth city have been handpicked and amassed. Right now, there were 21,000 China bees gathered at the shorelines composed of Chai Yunans, Zhao Nins, and Storm. About 30 warships were docked composed of cruisers, heavy carriers, long-range battleships, and one command ship, all waiting for deployment. Those who will be operating the ships and the tanks aren't counted. The Ozukaj stood on a watchtower, her voice amplified by the surrounding radio towers. For the past 12 years Ozoshio Gakur have kept silent and hidden from the world. We have trained in extremes to become much stronger and performed research for advanced weaponries and machineries. As of now we are the only nation with advanced warships made of metal. Others own ships that are only made of wood. Our buildings designs are superb and high class, and are very strong. We have trained to become stronger than ever. And now we finally re-emerge from laying low. We have foreseen the great benefits we will acquire if we made an alliance with snow. And so, for the past 8 years we have been looking for the snow country's missing princess. After the long years of, searching, we finally found her. And now we will help her overthrow her uncle and destroy his mercenary army. This will be the first test of our military power and research. Now that we are officially back, Dodo of Snow Country and his followers will be the first to taste our power. The Ozukaj said. Kushin then motioned for Narumi, Minako, Mio, and Miho. My children will be leading you for this battle. You will sail today for Snow Country and make contact with the squad sent their head and the rebels. Once the princess reaches the country, Ozoshio will strike. Make our village proud. Let the world know of our power once again. Rise, Ozoshio Gakour. To battle. To battle. The army roared as they marched and went on board on their assigned ships. Naruto's classmates, with the exception of the San siblings and the Sound 4, boarded another ship that will serve as the princess ship. They will be sailing for tea country while the fleet headed for snow. Soon the shorelines were filled with the sounds of warships being powered to life, releasing steam. The command ship blew out a long and deep blast, indicating for the fleet to move out. Key country and cut. Well done. Two more scenes left. Goku clapped happily. Naruto and his teammates sat as they watched the filming. He telepathically informed Sasuke and Hinata that a ship from Uzu was currently sailing for tea country while a fleet is headed for snow. As the crew began packing off, Goku, Yuki, and Sandayu walked towards the three. I just got news from Uzu. Our transport ship is now sailing towards here. It will arrive in two to three days. After filming the final scene for this place, we will immediately sail for the land of snow. Understood. Replied Goku. I'll go inform my crew. We will be filming a few scenes while sailing. Ozoshio Gakur Ozukaj Office Ozukaj Sama, Minato Sama, Sai along with Fu and Torune are here. Please let them in. Hi. While Donzo was still in a coma, Minato and Kushina personally removed every root on Bu's seal. Majority of them were thankful and swore new allegiance to Ozoshio while a small number of them remained loyal to Konohaha even though they were aware that they had been used. The Konoha loyalists were immediately executed by Minato himself. Right now, Sai was the second in command of Root, appointed by both Minato and Donzo. Donzo have no idea of his followers' change of allegiance and believes he still have Root under his control. Ironically, it was now Minato who leads his organization. Kushina-sama, Minato-sama, Sai said as he and his teammates kneeled. Donzo have ordered Root to expand and increase the patrolled areas. Some members have been ordered to investigate 4th City. Higher ranking members including my team were assigned to infiltrate the 3rd city and Otogakur. The Hokage have ordered Jiraiya to take over Gato's remaining assets and add them to his spy network. Anbu were also tasked to double and expand their patrols. Bandit camps inside the fire border were to be eliminated. The Hokage have decreased the missions being received in order to keep most of Konoha's forces intact when the Chunin exam begins. Minato nodded and addressed the pale team. Sigh. Quickly send a lower ranking member to blend in with Gato's remaining followers. This will be a good opportunity for us to infiltrate Jiraiya's spy network. Those ordered to infiltrate Ado in Third City, inform them to remain outside. Konoha's not the only one that will be sending spies. I will be informing Nagato and Orochimaru about this. I'm not sure about the Otokage, but the Third City will be publicly executing those who will be caught infiltrating, said Kushina. Go now. Inform everyone about your orders. Hi. Time skip. Two weeks 50 kilometers away from the land of snow the fleet was on standby as they waited for Koyuki's ship to arrive. While they waited, a dozen squads have been sent inland in order to secretly evacuate all civilians to safety. While at it, they also assassinated about 200 of Dodo's soldiers and took their chakra armors. 
There were a hundred samurai who were loyal to Sasetsu. They were given the chakra armors for their own added protection when the battle commences. Since they had no shinobi training, it will be great for their defense if they wore the chakra armors. The fleet was currently hidden behind an island covered by mountains. As Naruto's ship joined the fleet, everyone got ready. Koyuki and Sandiyu were given advanced chakra armors that were taken from two enemy lieutenants. The filming crew were also given chakra armors. Goku have requested the battle to be filmed as well, which is why they will be wearing the armors. Everyone paid attention when Narumi's voice was heard on all ship's speakers. This is your general speaking. We are now sailing towards the shorelines. Infantry, get ready for rapid deployment. Pilots, power up those ships and begin takeoff. Tankers, get in your vehicles. Expect immediate battle once we land. Everyone move to your assigned stations. As the fleet began to move towards Snow Country shorelines, a dozen airships took off from the heavy carriers. The airships were almost as big as the cruisers. It also had a dozen cannons on each side. The Uzumaki clan symbol can be easily seen since it was painted on all four sides of the ship. Command ship fleet 20 kilometers from land. The captain of the command ship shouted. Load the cannons. Narumi ordered through the intercom. 10 kilometers from land. Commence bombardment. Doto's castle ever since he took position as Snow Country's leader, he began leeching off its resources. Doto grew paranoid and used the country's money to recruit more people for his army. His mercenary army was now 30,000 strong. Everyone wore chakra armors. The three generals Dash, Nadair, Fubuki, and Mizore, and their lieutenants wore advanced chakra armors. Doto himself wore the latest and the most advanced chakra armor. He planned on eventually taking over the elemental nations once his army was huge enough. Dodo was currently sitting at his throne as he listened to his general's reports. My lord, one of my lieutenants have been missing for the past three days along with around 50 men, said Mizore. Fubuki reported the same thing. She too was missing the same number of personnel. I have about a hundred men missing as well, said Nadair. Just then, a lieutenant burst inside the main hall and ran towards the man on the throne. My lord. A fleet has been spotted about 40 kilometers from the shorelines. And it's approaching fast. Before anybody could react, there was a huge explosion that shook the castle, followed by another one. And another one. And then another one. The bombardment was continuous. Another lieutenant burst inside screaming his head off. My lord. We're under attack. Nadair, annoyed, shouted. We're aware of that. Give us a status report you fool. Enemy troops have invaded the shorelines and are advancing towards the castle. Our forces have engaged them to battle, but more enemies are coming off their ships. Do they have a flag? Asked Dodo. Yes, my lord. Theirs was a swirl of the whirlpool. Whirlpool? The Uzumaki clan represented that symbol. Aside from them, I don't know any group that have a swirl in their flag. But the Uzumaki clan's supposed to be extinct. Dodo and his generals thought. Fubuki, Mizore. Mobilize your divisions. Prepare for counterattack and engage the enemy. Nadair, station your division by the castle. Form a perimeter. Man the cannons. Position at the towers. Nadair, take half of Mizore's troops with you and add them with the defense. Dodo ordered. Hi. Main Army's POV 1st Division was led by Minako. He led 10,000 of the army. Their task was to engage and eliminate the enemy's initial engaging forces. The other 10,000, which will be the 2nd Division, will be waiting as reserve, led Minorumi. As the Uzu Shinobi jumped off the ships, they immediately formed into columns after killing the small defending force. They began charging towards the city and was met by 5,000 mercenaries led by Mizore. The 1st Division threw out three waves of chakra and forced kunais with explosive tags. Mizore's troops were in disarray as they got bombarded by cannons and now kunais with explosive tags. Even though they wore chakra armor, they still got affected by the attack and lost numbers. His forces began to regroup and merged with Fubuki's division that just arrived. Show them the power of Ozashio Gakur. Destroy them all, Minako shouted. The first division gave out a battle cry and clashed with Fubuki and Mizore's combined forces. The battle plan was simple. Storm operatives will subtly activate their Rinnegan and use the Petra path to absorb all Jutsus that will be thrown at them by the enemy, while the rest of the attacking forces overwhelm the enemy with heavy Jutsus. Through studying the chakra armors Ozashio was able to acquire years ago, they were able to learn of its weaknesses. The chakra armors had a limit in absorbing incoming attacks and will eventually become a normal clothing. The main weakness was the dish plates in the chest area. If critically hit, the dish plate will malfunction and kill the wearer through electrocution. 
As the two sides clashed, the second division led by Narumi disembarked from the ships and formed into columns. While the enemies busily fought off the first division, the second division moved in for a pincer attack. Narumi began weaving hand seals as she joined her brother. Narumi engaged Fubuki while Minako fought with Mizore. Air Force POV Mio led the Air Force. With her were 500 shinobi. The 12 airships easily flew past the country's forests while the armies clashed below. Enemy camps are in range. The captain said. Good. Bomb the camps and the defensive towers. Destroy their cannons and other defensive systems. Avoid hitting the mountains and the mountainside. Hi. Tank Force POV While the Air Force swept the camps, Miho led two dozen tanks plus the remaining 500 shinobi and entered through the country's emergency tunnels. The tunnels led them straight to the mountainside that were two kilometers near the enemy camps. As the tanks came out of the tunnels, they rolled in and began firing at the site. Doto's POV Doto was at the balcony of the castle while Nadar's division set a perimeter around it. A lieutenant bowed to him and gave the latest status report. My lord. Mizure-sama and Fubuki-sama's forces are currently engaged with the enemy's main army. Their forces have already suffered heavy losses while the enemy kept pushing on. A dozen airships have flown past our walls and began bombing the camps. Two dozen huge carriages with cannons came from the mountainside tunnels and swept in the camp, firing waves after waves of explosives and destructive jutsus, annihilating the survivors. Our defensive structures along with the cannons have been destroyed due to heavy bombardment. As he finished his report, he noticed his master glaring at the sky. Everybody looked up and saw 12 huge airships. That's definitely the Uzumaki clan's flag. Dodo thought as he recognized Whirlpool's symbol. The army watched in terror as the ship's cannons fired destructive jutsus. The ships hit the towers that were below them. They're aiming for our defensive systems. Defensive barriers. Now, shouted Nadair. Layers of huge and dull ice domes began to form and protected the castle along with the army inside. They waited in bated breath as they held their defensive barrier. They were surprised when they felt the onslaught against them stop. One brave mercenary went outside the dome to check and was surprised to see the enemy airships flying past their location. Air Force POV Hey! Idiots! Now you have no idea what's going to happen next. Mia muttered as she watched the army below conjure ice domes. Alright! Time to drop below while they are blind. Mia ordered through the intercom. Hundreds of paratroopers jumped off the airships and regrouped with the tank force that were waiting below, hidden in the forests. The twins POV Mio's forces merged with her twin brother's forces and concealed themselves. How are things going? Miho inquired. Nechan and Nisan's forces are easily destroying the engaging enemy's forces. The enemy did not expect a pincer move. They should be here soon. Replied Mio. The only defense they have left are the ones by the castle. That's no more than 10 towers. The tanks can easily destroy them later, Miho said. Yo! A voice called through their mental link. Naruto-kun? Hell yeah! We're almost finished here. There's only about 500, Rasengan. Dash now 499 left here. Narumine and Minako Ni are whooping the enemy general's butts. Dash ha! Take this, Molotov Rasengan. Dash see you guys later, he said as a huge explosion were heard in the background. Outside the twins metal link, the explosion of Naruto's fire jutsu could be seen as the fire blew up the forests and killed about 50 enemies. Air Force POV Amazing. This is going to be a hit. We'll be the first company to ever produce a movie taken from an actual war. Wohu. Cheered by one of the filming crew as their ship flew past the castle and cut the scene. Tank Force POV Yes. Director's going to love this. Main Army POV Ha. I can't believe I'm filming a movie while I'm in it. Screamed Goku in delight as he dodged an enemy samurai. Katan, Gokaku no Jutsu. I still got it. Why ha ha ha. The director cheered with glee. Narumi's POV you guys have depended so much on your armors that you have gotten weak. Narumi told Fubuki. Arg. Damn you. Ice release, ice needle blizzard. Fubuki replied with rage. Narumi calmly released a fire dragon from her mouth. The fire dragon easily melted the ice needles and struck Fubuki right in the chest plate of her armor. The two have been fighting for a very long time now. At least to Fubuki, she was fighting. Narumi was merely toying with her opponent while the Uzumaki army destroyed Dodo's army. Fubuki was getting more and more frustrated as her division got slaughtered. Whenever she made an attempt to help, Narumi would simply block her path. Whatever jutsu she tried to throw at the female Uzumaki, Narumi would simply absorb it. I'm done playing with you, Narumi said as she held out her arms. 
Golden chains from her back came out and immediately restrained Fubuki. The chains destroyed the chakra armor while keeping the wearer alive. Fubuki watched helplessly as her once 10,000 soldiers decreased to a hundred. She gasped in horror as her opponent walked towards her, her red hair flowing like wildfire, the same way the dreaded Red Death's hair did when she slaughtered the Kumo army during the war. Minako POV arg. Stupid fat guy and his stupid snowboard. Minako muttered as Mizore sled past him with his mechanical snowboard. To Mizore, he was winning as he simply fired missiles after missiles from his chakra armor while he sped around his opponent. To Minako, he was simply letting his opponent think he was losing. What Mizore failed to notice was his army of 5000 being reduced to 100 by the Uzumaki army. I guess it's time. Minako thought as he took out a dozen three-pronged kunai and threw them in all directions. Ninpa, kunai cage bunshin no jutsu main army POV for a whole minute, there were flashes of yellow around the battlefield. It would appear at random locations leaving a trail of dead bodies. Hey! A voice shouted as Minako harai shined in front of Mizore and slapped a seal on his armor, disabling it. That was my kill. You took it. Minako chuckled sheepishly as he remembered about Naruto and his classmates contest of who kills the most. Sorry, Naruto-kun. The brother shouted back. You guys can kill the others stationed at the castle. There are still 10,000 mercenaries reserved as last defense. As Minako flashed everywhere and killed the remaining enemies, the attacking forces regrouped and formed once again into columns. Narumi dragged a restrained Fubuki and set her on a kneeling position. Minako did the same with his opponent, dragging Mizore and setting him on a kneeling position beside Fubuki. Fubuki and Mizore looked around and inspected the battlefield. Thousands of corpses littered the place but not a single corpse from the invading forces could be found. What are you guys? You're supposed to be dead when those three villages attacked you. How come you're all alive? You destroyed my army. Ark. Fubuki half screamed, half asked Narumi and Minako. Dodo and his army POV Dodo-sama. Grave news. Fubuki-sama and Mizore-sama's forces have been annihilated. The enemy army are marching towards the castle as of this moment. How could this happen? Dodo exclaimed angrily. What of Fubuki and Mizore? What happened to them? Nader asked the scout. Before the scout could respond to their questions, Nader's soldiers began to shout. Enemy fire. Take cover. Prepare to create domes. No. We'll only blind ourselves. Counter it with Jutsus. Fire at it. Ice release, ice dragon missiles. The army shouted as one to deflect the rain of kunai, shuriken, and senbon. The projectiles fell harmlessly to the ground as the ice missiles collided with it. Nadir began weaving hand seals as he jumped off the balcony and charged towards the invading army, creating hundreds of ice wolves beside him. Fubuki-chan, I will avenge you. The mercenary army watched as their general charged at the enemy. Those in the front lines followed after him. What are you waiting for? The enemy army is here. Charge, Dodo shouted. His mercenary army gave a battle cry as they charged to meet the invading force. Dodo removed his fur cloak to reveal his highly advanced chakra armor. He too began weaving hand seals as he jumped off the balcony and charged at the enemy. Invading forces POV someone's eager to die. Naruto commented as he watched Nadair's incoming form. Here they come. Sasuke muttered as he saw the army behind Nadair. Dankers, go get the towers. Minako shouted. Infantry, charge. Ordered Narumi. Ha. Finally. Mio and Miho both said as the army behind them gave a battle cry. Normal POV the Uzumaki army waited for Dodo's army to approach. Nadir and his ice wolves were the first to reach the enemy lines and tried tearing through them. However, he was repelled by a strong ice jutsu from Miho and was sent flying to the army behind him. The twins quickly charged after Nadir and engaged him to a battle. As the enemy got closer, the tanks moved forward and began firing at the incoming army. The tanks weaved through the downed opponents and ran them over. Still moving forward, the tanks approached the enemy towers and obliterated them. Dodo's army was in a disarray but immediately regrouped as they felt Dodo's presence. Dodo Kazaana smirked and began weaving hand seals and produced black ice dragons, aiming at his opponents. His confident smirk faded as he finally noticed the leaders of the enemy army. Kushina? Minato? No, they're dead. The usurper gathered chakra and tried disrupting his chakra flow. Kai. 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 What is this? This armor's supposed to make me immune to Genjutsu. He was too consumed by his current dilemma and was only broken out from his thoughts when a fist connected to his face and sent him flying upwards. Dodo was able to make out the image of his attacker as he glanced down before crashing. 
His opponent was a striking image of the Yondaime Hokage but was shorter and younger. Hmm. So this is their son. So they're real after all. They're not dead. Focus, you old bastard. Dodo glared at the Minato replica for calling him an old bastard. I, Uzumaki Namikaze Naruto, will be your opponent. Proclaimed the boy. Ha. Don't be such a fool. You're just a little brat. The old man stopped in mid-sentence as he dodged a roundhouse kick from the boy. Naruto did not stop at this but pushed on the offense. He kept on attacking for a whole five minutes. During their taijutsu match, both were able to land hits against each other. Thanks to his chakra armor, Dodo was able to keep up against the little brat. The little brat, however, had a lot of tricks hidden from his sleeve. Naruto disengaged and quickly formed a single one-handed seal and released his gravity seals. Everyone in the battlefield felt a strong gust of wind and quickly found its source. Damn. Naruto-kun slash senpai slash Sama's serious? Dota's up for a brutal beating. The Uzumaki army thought as they returned focus to their own respective battles. One of the things Naruto hated the most were traitors. Especially those who betray their own family. I'm going to beat the living shit out of you, Naruto stated as he vanished and instantly reappeared in front of Dodo. Kicking him in the stomach and sending him 20 meters high upwards. Up in the air Naruto quickly reappeared beside Dodo and need him sending the old man flying to the right downwards. Seven meters before he crashed to the ground, Naruto appeared once again and hit him with an uppercut, sending him to the left upwards. Up in the air Naruto once again reappeared below him and elbowed him, sending him higher to the air vertically. As Dodo flew up 40 meters high, he was met by three Narutos that were 60 meters high in the sky. The two Narutos on the side threw the middle Naruto downwards the incoming Dodo, hitting him with an enhanced axe kick. Dodo plummeted down with a huge crash, the spot where he landed forming a huge crater. Naruto watched as his opponent slowly stood up from his crash site. He seems a little hurt. He should have difficulties standing by now, Kurama said. Yeah. This guy's tough, I admit. Not really. He just happened to be wearing a very advanced chakra armor. You have to destroy it first. Remember, those chakra armors have their limits. Just bombard him with your strongest jutsus. Got it. Showtime. Naruto created four shadow clones to protect himself while he closed his eyes and concentrated for his jutsu. Narumi felt a warm breeze gathering in the air and mentally warned her comrades through the mental link as she recognized her brother's jutsu. The Uzumaki army quickly formed hand seals for an earth jutsu. Dota's army watched in confusion as the opposing army slammed their palms to the ground and elevated the earth around them 10 meters high. As Naruto finished gathering the necessary chakra, he flashed into a dozen seal and finished by clasping his hands into a praying position as he called out his attack. Hellfire release, Inferno's third circle. A huge blast of fire came out from Naruto's body and burned everything around him in a 30 mile radius. The earth around him cracked open as black flames rose and scorched everything on it. Those who were within the blast range immediately got consumed by the black flames. Their chakra armors were nothing as the inferno easily melted them off, destroying the main panels and electrocuting them while they burned. They screamed in agony as their bodies turned into ash. Their souls also feeling the heat of the black flames, hence the name of the jutsu. Hellfire was a legendary type of fire, release long forgotten. The last people who had this Kakegenkai have long died before the first shinobi war took place. Only those who had a very, very, strong and potent affinity to fire have the power to use it. The flames of the Amaterasu produced by the Uchiha's Mangeku Sharingan is an example of a hellfire jutsu. Although the Uchiha's were not aware of it. Naruto's jutsu have 9 levels with the first circle being the weakest and the ninth circle the most powerful, has the largest radius, and require the most amount of chakra. The chakra required for the first circle is equivalent to summoning a minor boss summon. Naruto had a maniacal look as he stared into Dodo's eyes, as if he gazed right into his soul. Dodo felt uneasy as he noticed the blonde's eyes. They were now red slits. He was thankful for his highly advanced chakra armor as he was still alive and well, although he did not notice the new cracks all over it. When Naruto cast his jutsu, Dodo tried to counter it by using his ice release, Black Dragon Blizzard but the Inferno's flame simply burned it instead of melting it. Muwahahaha, Naruto laughed. Behold. You'll be the first one to see and feel my ultimate piece of art. Tremble in fear. Be afraid. Recoil in despair. Cower in awe. And cry your heart out. Because my art. Is an explosion. Naruto cackled madly as he began weaving into a long series of seals. Shit. Narumi cursed as she watched the skies. Storm clouds were quickly gathering due to the high concentration of heat below. We need to get the hell out of here. 
This place will be obliterated in 30 seconds. She ordered the army. Minako quickly jumped down and grabbed the downed Nat Air, taking him with them. As the Uzumaki army retreated for cover, Dodo also felt the danger ahead, although not knowing what it was. Stop him. He ordered his army. Those who were brave enough charged at the blonde but were confronted by Naruto's clones. As Naruto reached the 100th seal, he called out his jutsu. Storm release, Kami's wrath. Silence. There was a three second silence. For those within the area, it seemed like a long time. After the quiet, there was a blinding flash of light. And then it happened. Thousands of lightning strikes rained down from the sky. A hundred tornadoes were created and touched the already blazing ground. The fire powered the tornadoes turning them into fire tornadoes. The strong winds blew everywhere causing the droplets of rain to freeze, turning into hail. The area was consumed by lightning, ice, and firestorm. It was pure destruction. The wrath of Kami indeed. If someone would watch it from a distance, they would see a breathtaking, captivating, and yet at the same time, a horrifying scene. The storm went on for 10 minutes before it finally showed a decrease of power. After another 10 minutes, it finally died down. The area now looked like a wasteland. There was residual smoke. Trees were either scorched or uprooted. The earth was dry and cracked. The castle was obliterated into a pile of scorched stone. Thousands of dead bodies littered the ground. Those who miraculously survived watched in horror as they took in the scene. The Uzumaki army swept in for the kill. Not for vengeance, not of hatred. But of mercy. They ended the lives of the surviving mercenary army to release them from their misery of pain and trauma. In a certain crater, a silhouette of a certain man could be seen slowly standing up. The man took a look at his surroundings for a good one minute before he checked on himself. Ha 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 ha. That was the most destructive jutsu I have seen. And lived after it. Ha 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 ha. Dota laughed as he found Naruto. The blonde kept an impassive look as he began channeling chakra to his body once more, his Madara moment over. Dota was about to make another taunt when he heard loud cracking noises. He looked at his armor as it finally broke into pieces and fell off his body. His smirk immediately vanished as he realized he was completely defenseless now. He never had shinobi training and only relied on his chakra armor. For the first time in 20 years, he once again felt real fear. He tried his best not to show it but failed. Naruto casually walked towards him as he began cracking his knuckles, the same way his grandmother Tsunade does when she's about to beat up someone. For the next 10 minutes, the sounds of flesh ripping and getting pounded could be heard. After 3 minutes of beating, he finally broke down and began pleading for mercy. His cries for mercy fell on deaf ears as he received his beating. As he lay on the ground like a beaten pulp, a group of people wearing chakra armor came to him. They all removed their helmets as Dodo stared at them. Hello, uncle. Koyuki greeted coldly. Missed me? I believe you're looking for this, she said as she showed him the hexagonal crystal. Due to your greed and envy, you killed my father and ruined this country. You sent people after me so you could claim this crystal. The key to Snow Country's treasure. You thought this will open a safe that contains a large collection of items that you can trade for gold? Let me show what this treasure does. This was my father's final gift to me in Snow Country. Koyuki had her guards drag her broken uncle towards the Rainbow Glaciers, with everyone following behind. As Koyuki placed the crystal on the hexagonal pedestal, a soft humming sound could be heard. Slowly, they felt warmth coming from the generator. After a few minutes the land was no longer covered in snow. Fresh green grass and blooming flowers could be seen all throughout Snow Country's landscape. Everybody watched as a projection appeared, reflected by the Rainbow Glaciers. It showed a four-year-old Koyuki talking with her father. Believe in the future. If you do, spring will come, Sasetsu said. Koyuki, what would you like to do when it comes? I'll become a princess. Young Koyuki replied. Hmm, what kind of princess? Hmm, a kind, strong one. A princess who believes in justice. Ha 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 ha. That's going to be very hard work. But if you don't give up and keep on believing in your dreams, one day, for sure, you will become one. Sasetsu said as he placed the necklace around her neck. Can you see that a very beautiful princess is standing here? But I am not quite decided yet. There is one more thing that I want to become. What is it? An actress. Koyuki shed tears of joy as the scene faded. I've done it father. I've become an actress. I'm ready to become a princess now. Time skip. One day the Uzumaki army have gathered the remains of the fallen and burned them. The people of Snow Country have gathered at the old castle. They were overjoyed when they learned of Dodo's crushing defeat against the Uzumaki army. In the middle of the square was a stage. 
On it were Dodo, Fubuki, Mizore, and Nad Air bound and gagged, set into kneeling positions in front of the crowd. The crowd was murmuring among themselves as they openly pointed and glared at the four. Koyuki walked in front and all talking stopped at once. She faced the four and began to talk. You have committed crimes against Snow Country and its people. You have stolen its riches and used it for your own personal use. You have usurped the throne and assassinated the daimyo and tried to kill her daughter as well. If you haven't been stopped, you would have brought more destruction upon Snow Country as you have planned waging war against the five great countries in the elemental nations. Koyuki then unsheathed a long katana. I, Kazaana Koyuki, daughter of Kazaana Sasetsu and the rightful heir to the throne, hereby declare you guilty of plunder, treason, and murder. As the bringer of justice, I sentence you to death. You no longer have the rights to say your last words. Koyuki closed her eyes and took deep breaths. As she opened them, she struck down the sword four times, decapitating the traitors. As the four headless bodies slumped to the floor, everybody cheered. Dodo and his followers were finally gone at last. Koyuki wiped a tear as she joined Naruto and his siblings. Father, you are avenged. You may now rest in peace. Time skip, one month land of snow, spring after Dodo's death, the people of Snow Country began rebuilding. With the help of Ozoshio Gakoer, they were able to construct buildings that are far superior compared to the ones they had during Dodo's rule. With the combined efforts of Snow and Whirlpool's scientists, they have managed to finish the generator. Snow Country was no longer covered with snow, but instead, by green grass and blooming flowers. A month after Dodo's death, the country was renamed to the Land of Spring. During the month, Koyuki had formally taken position as Spring's daimyo. The alliance with Ozoshio was formally signed. Kushina and Minato paid a visit during that day. More ships came from Whirlpool bearing construction supplies and blueprints. New trade routes have been opened as well. The daimyo asked for help as she wanted Spring to have its own shinobi village. Whirlpool agreed and asked for students to study in Uzu while the construction of the village hidden among Spring occurred. Goku with the help of his crew finished filming the Princess Gale movie. Goku's company was now looking for actors and actresses for their next project, The Whirlpool Princess. The battle that occurred a month ago was also made into a movie, which will be entitled Is the Missing Snow. It was based on Daimyo Koyuki's real-life story. From the time when she was four years old up to the point where she finally claimed the throne as Snow, now Springs, Daimyo. The movie had two purposes, one was for audience and income, and two, for Ozoshio Gakur's propaganda. It will be available for viewing one month before the Chunin exams that will be held in Kanahaga Kaur. Ozoshio Gakur Ozukage office The Ozukage was currently signing papers regarding the Land of Spring. She straightened up on her seat as the storm commander appeared in a whirlpool sunshine. Ozukage Sama. Kaede said as he laid an envelope on Kushina's desk. The Ozukage opened the envelope to reveal a stack of forms, an invitation card, a brochure, and a letter from Kanahaga Kaur. It was for the upcoming Chunin exams. Kushina smiled as she set down the papers. It's time. Choose. To preserve? Or to destroy? Choose. A powerful and ancient voice said. Naruto's eyes fluttered open. It was now morning. He had been dreaming. This was not the first time he dreamt about that unknown source of voice prompting him to choose. He sat in silence pondering about it before finally shrugging and heading downstairs for breakfast. What Naruto did not know was Hinata and Sasuke were also awake, thinking about the dream. They too have been having the same dream ever since they returned from Spring Country. Ozukage office sent these papers back to Konoha. Hi, Sai said. Ozukage sama if I may ask, how does the seal exactly work? The Hokage, Danzo. Some council members, and the Anbu are the only people in Konoha who regularly check the bingo book as well as a few jonins. When the Hokage or whoever reads these papers, the seal will activate and affect their mind and put them into a kind of trance without them knowing. So even if they read Naruto's entry, who's an S-rank nin in the bingo book, they will ignore that fact and allow him to partake with the Chunin examination, not seeing him as a threat. Truly, the art of Fuinjutsu is both amazing and terrifying. The things you can do with it are just endless. Commented Sai, who was very amazed. Later, Ozoshio Gakura training grounds Gara and his siblings have been sent by the Kazakich back to Ozoshio Gakura for their training, with them was their sensei, Baki. Along with their classmates, they were currently being briefed by the Ozukich. We have four weeks to train before you're sent to Konoha, and that is two weeks before the event. Your roles are the most important for the attack, said the Ozukich. As for the team assignments, Miho will be acting as the Jonin Sensei of Naruto's team. Mio for Fu's team, 
and Utakata for Tuya's team. The Suna team will be the same with Baki as their sensei. As you have noticed, each team has a Jinchuriki. Now, the four of you will be working on your synchronization with your respective tail beats. You may be now friends with each other but you still have to complete the bond for you to be able to become perfect Jinka Arikis. Like Killer B of Kumo? Utakata asked. Yes. You will be going to a temple similar to the one inside the giant tortoise. Minato replied. Arashi-sama will be the one to watch over your training. You four will begin your training as soon as you arrive at the island. If you four would, please follow me. After the five have left, Kushina continued. The rest of you are free to ask any sensei you wish to train you. I have already informed all Jonin about this, so they will not refuse and will transfer their current work to another if they are currently preoccupied. Feel free to use any of the training grounds. And with that, the Yozu Kij went back to her office. Sasuke went off to find Toby while Hinata went to find her mother. Lee ran off to the academy for Kaze, while Karen went to the hospital to find Shizune. Yakumo also ran off to the academy for Natsuki. Tuya and Shien remained since they wanted to be trained by Mio and Miho. Baki led Konkuro and Tamari to another ground to train. Hayuga residents, training grounds after some studying and observing, I have come to the conclusion about your dojutsu, Hitomi stated. What of it, Kasan? Asked Hinata. You are half Hayuga and half Uzumaki. Therefore, it is just right that you either get the Byakugan or the Ranigan. The Byakugan is already active when a Hayuga is born, only requiring for the user to learn how to wield it. While the Rinnegan normally awakens when an Uzumaki reaches the age 18 or when the user undergoes extreme training, or experiences extreme trauma. Back in Konoha, you were made an outcast due to your eyes. Yours doesn't exactly look like the ones the Hayugas have. Although impossible, I have concluded that your Rinnegan and Byakugan have combined. Normally a person cannot have two dojutsus. If one had the Rinnegan while their spouse had the Sharingan or the Byakugan, their offspring will only receive one dojutsu, depending on the dominating genes. Hanabi got the Byakugan. In your case, my Rinnegan genes and Hyashi's Byakugan genes have combined instead of overpowering each other. The only known person who had both dojutsu, Rinnegan and Sharingan combined, was the Sage of the Six Paths himself. If my theory is right, then you will be the second person to have a combined dojutsu. How do we know if I really do have the two combined? This is where your training starts. The first part is for you to activate your dojutsu. Now, I want you to sit below that waterfall and meditate. Concentrate and feel nature around you. Once you begin feeling it, gather chakra to your eyes. I do not know what your dojutsu's name is, but you will. You will hear it in your mind once you have perfected your meditation, Hitomi said while he nodded did as ordered. Once you activate your new dojutsu, we go to the second part of your training, getting acquainted with your new powers. Begin. Uchiha Residence, Training Grounds Toby will be training you to increase your chakra control and capacity further by doing extreme chakra exercises. Next week, you and Toby will be fighting one-on-one -on -one using the Susano. It is time for you to activate its second form, while also maintaining it for more than 30 minutes, said Toby. Sasuke groaned as he could already feel hell. Toby may be a good boy but he was bad when it came to training. Toby was a slave driver and a sadist. Kanahagakura Training Ground 3 Konoha's recent graduates, the Rookie 9, were currently gathered and were discussing about the incoming exam. Combining our gathered information, we know that the exam will be divided into three parts, Neji said as he began writing on the sand. The first part will be a written examination with nine questions. Its main purpose is for us to cheat and not to get caught. The tenth question is simple. We will be asked to give up since the next round will be difficult, Sasami said. Obviously, it is a trap. We'll just have to remain silent and continue to the next round. Sakura finished. Now, we need to plan about how we're going to cheat while also communicate with the others in order to share information. We will be arranged in a sitting position where there will be chunins near us, said Shino. As the rookie nine were too busy planning, they did not notice three other people watching them at a distance, listening to their conversation. They have a nice plan. Asuma commented. However, their plan won't work. The Chunin exams will be different compared to the ones before. Kakashi drawled as he kept his eyes on his orange book. Still, they are showing their youthfulness by working as a big team, said Guy. Hmm, you say something Guy? Damn you Kakashi and your hip attitude. Shut up. They're going to hear us. Asuma reprimanded them. Just then, Ananbu appeared behind them. Kakashi-san, Guy-san. Asuma-san. Hokage-sama wishes to speak with you. Hokage offers thank you for coming in short notice. The Hokage began. 
As I'm sure you're aware by now, the Chunin examinations will be different compared to the ones before. Since Kumo and Iwa along with new other villages are participating, the council have decided to make it different. We can't appear to look weak and therefore, we must prepare a harder exam. And since our Chunin exams procedures are now common knowledge, I'm sure the audience will bore themselves to death if we kept it like that, everyone chuckled as they realized it was true. More importantly, the exams will be broadcast live worldwide, Sarutobi said as he puffed smoke from his pipe. What? Kakashi exclaimed, stopping reading and putting his porn book in his pocket. This is why I wanted you to train your students harder. We have six weeks left before the exam. This event is very important to us as it will be broadcast live worldwide. If our Junins make it to the finals, it will show the world that Konoha produces strong shinobi. Not only the world will see us as a strong village, this will also make us attract more contracts and business agreements. Yosh. You can trust US on this task, Hokage-sama. We will make sure our students burn to their brightest as their flames of youth show the world there everybody else in the room just sighed while the Taijutsu master went on with his speech. And if not, I will make 500 laps around Konoha. Guy finished, striking a pose. Very well. The Hokage said. You are dismissed. Make sure you do not inform your genins about the change in the examinations as it would be unfair, Sarutobi said as he pointed at his crystal ball. They have a nice plan. And I'm glad they're working together. Just make sure they will still work together even if they find about the new exam. Konoha stood strong and won the war because of teamwork. Remember that. The Hokage went back to puffing smoke and signing paperwork when the Jonin Sensei left. They never noticed another presence outside the room who was also listening to their conversation. PFFT. Teamwork my ass. If it wasn't for the Uzumaki clan you wouldn't have won the war. You repaid Uzu by selling her to her enemies, traitor. Thought Kabuto as he stealthily left the Hokage Tower. Ah, whatever. Konoha will be no more after the third part of the exam. At least I know the third part is still a tournament, although I'm not sure what kind. Uzukage-sama will be pleased when she learns about the exams being broadcast live. About five minutes after Kabuto left, Donzo and Jiraiya entered the office. Ah, Donzo, Jiraiya, what news do you bring? Greeted Sarutobi. The infiltration in the third city failed. Donzo began. Like all other spies sent by other villages, they have been captured and executed publicly. The spies I sent to Otogakur haven't sent word yet. Hmm, let's just hope your route have made it inside Otto and weren't captured, or worse, killed. Do not worry about them. I have confidence in my route. As for me, I have successfully integrated Gato's remaining assets to Konoha and my spy network, said Jiraiya proudly. Those who refused to join, were of course killed. Good. Make sure to keep surveillance about possible threats. Will do, Hokage-sama. Jiraiya and Donzo both said as they bowed and left the office. Uzushi Ogakur Uzukage Office Uzukage-sama, there's something you need to know. Kayate, what is it? Our spy tower near Land of Lightning's mountains have spotted a floating island as huge as 4th City headed southwest. Below the floating island was a navy fleet moving along them, probably as escorts. Have you identified who these people might be? Hi. Upon closer inspection, we have found that everyone in the fleet were wearing Hittai aids, confirming our suspicions that they were shinobi from Sora no Kuni. Soragakur? Hmm, so they're back. And so it seems. This can't be good. What are your orders? Send four squads of storm and have them infiltrate the island and the fleet. Find out their purpose. I want news in one week. One week later report. Soragakur is headed towards fire country. Their objective is to destroy Konoha. We have calculated their speed and concluded that they will enter Fire Country's borders in three weeks. We cannot allow that to happen. They will only ruin our plans. Here are your orders, have a dozen airships and warships intercept Sky Village. I want you and Minato-kun to lead 2,000 of our strongest storm operatives and eliminate the threat. The land of Sky must be wiped out within one week. Now move. Kanahagakur Hokage Office Sensei. Sarutobi looked up and was quick to jump away from his seat as the windows crashed because of Jiraiya. Damn it, Jiraiya. Use the damn door. Sorry, Sensei. But doors are too simple. And besides, I have urgent news. What is it? My spies located near Water Country have spotted a huge floating island along with the fleet headed towards Fire Country. Sensei. How does this island look like? It looked like a temple. The design looked ancient. Soragakur. It's the land of sky. Jiraiya, I want you to find out where exactly they're headed and what they are doing in the Elemental Nation's domain. There will be no stopovers for you, Jiraiya. 
meaning, no time for your research. This is important. Find out about Sky and report back to me as soon as possible. Jiraiya felt the air of seriousness from the Hokage. He nodded and left the office. Sarutobi sighed and called for his hidden anbu. Hokage-sama? One of you get me Nara Shikaku and Hayuga Hiyashi. One of you go to our weapons department and make sure all equipment are at perfect condition. One of you go to the barrier core and tell them to double the number of people patrolling. I will be going there later to have our barrier doubled. I want ceiling and barrier teams by then. And oh, one of you inform my secretary to have my office windows fixed and replaced by a double thick glass. Understood, Hokage-sama. Unknown location, Arashi along with the forge and Shiriki have traveled to a far away and isolated island. The island could not be found by normal means since it was hidden among the clouds. Meaning, it was high in the sky. In the entrance was a golden torai as huge as a village gate. The floating island was circular and had nine waterfalls. Each waterfall had a carving of a tailed beast in gold. In the main center of the island was a huge tree and 21 meter diameter and about 300 meters tall. Two months ago, Miraku had a vision of you four training to become the perfect Jinchuriki. She gave the description of the place for us to find. Storm operatives have only just found about this place two weeks ago. After spending time here and observing the place, we have concluded that this place had been created by the sage himself for the Bijou and their host. He must have seen the future and learned about Jinka Arikis. On with the lesson. The first step on becoming a perfect Jinchuriki is by fighting your own self. The second is by harnessing your Bijou's chakra where you will be able to use chakra mode. The third and final step is synchronization, where you undergo tailed beast mode after successfully becoming one with your Bijou, said Arashi. Time to get started. Go to your respective waterfalls and begin meditating. Conquer your inner self. Good luck, Arashi said as he produced three clones. The clones following one Jinchuriki, while the original Arashi followed after Naruto. Naruto's mindscape so, you have come. Have you decided yet? A familiar voice asked. Naruto turned around and gasped. In front of him was, well, himself. Except there were a little difference. The other person's eyes were purple and had ring patterns around it. He also had two horns. Are you my inner self? Naruto asked. Ah. I guess you could call me that. So, have you decided yet? He asked once again. What do you mean? Are you going to preserve, or are you going to destroy? I'm really confused. Is this my test? Aren't we supposed to be fighting for dominance? Ha ha ha. That was funny. If you were like the other Jinchuriki, you would have to fight your inner self. But you aren't like them. You are me. I am the one who'd been asking you to choose in your dream. Instead of fighting, you must decide whether you'd preserve or destroy. You're giving me a headache. Would you please speak in a normal fashion and not in weird riddles? If you haven't figured it out yet, I'm you. Well, of course, you are. You are my inner self, right? Asked an annoyed Naruto. Yes. But you do not understand. However, you will once you have made your choice. To destroy? Or to preserve? Uzoshi Ogakur Hayuga Residence Training Grounds It has been a week since Hinata began meditating to activate her dojutsu. Every day, she would try to meditate for 8 hours, only stopping to eat and drink. Hinata was still currently sitting at the middle of the small waterfall. Choose. To preserve? Or to destroy? Choose. A whisper said while she was meditating. It's that voice again. Hinata thought as she opened her eyes. She gasped when she found herself in what looked like a sewer, instead of her meditating area. You have come, at last, child, said someone. Uchiha residence training ground Sasuke lay at the ground panting as he and Toby finished a spar. For the past week he had been training hard until he tired himself out. As of now he was just as exhausted. He closed his eyes while he regained his breathing. Choose. To preserve? Or to destroy? Choose. Sasuke heard as he felt a soft breeze. It's that voice again. Sasuke thought. He breathed a long and deep sigh as he opened his eyes but gasped when he noticed he was not in his training ground. He stood up and checked his surroundings, realizing he was in a huge sewer. Shrugging, he walked off to explore the place. This way, my child. The others are waiting. A voice said. It was the same voice as the one he had been hearing in his dreams. Naruto's mindscape what? Patience, my dear boy. I will be explaining things soon as they arrive. They? Who? Naruto asked, confused. Just then, he heard splashing of water, indicating someone's approach. Na Naruto-kun? What? What's going on? He not asked, not noticing the other person with him. 
Naruto was surprised to find Hinata inside his mindscape. But before he could respond to her question, he heard more splashing of water. He and Hinata turned to find Sasuke approaching. Hey guys. You're here as well. What's going on? Sasuke asked. Naruto simply shrugged as he pointed towards his look alike. Now that the three of you are here, I will be explaining things. But before that, let's have our seats, shall we? He asked as he waved his hands and four couches appeared. He took a seat while the other three nervously followed him. Now, for starters, I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Otsutsuki Hagoromo. Or as many knew me, I am the Sage of the Six Paths, founder of Ninshu. The Sage held out a hand as the three were about to speak. No interruptions. Now, as you three have grown in Uzushio, I'm sure you are now familiar with the task I assigned to the Otsutsuki, now Uzumaki clan. And that is by maintaining balance. I, the sage, am not necessarily good. I am also evil in some way you may call it. In passing judgment, I and my descendants must choose whether to destroy something that causes imbalance to the world, or to give them a second chance. Balance is not always achieved through peaceful ways, it can be also achieved through death and destruction. I have been asking you three to choose ever since you freed Snow Country. You three will play a very important role to the world's future, as it is your destiny. You will forge your own path should you choose to preserve, or to destroy Konoha and the other three, villages who desired to destroy our clan before. I will be only guiding you once you have made your decision. Whether you choose to preserve or to destroy, I will be helping you in the future. I'm sure you three might be wondering why I chose you. That will be answered once you have passed your judgment. You may now speak. Surprisingly, it was Sasuke who spoke first. I came from Konoha. And I'm going to judge them starting with my family. When I was younger, I never understood why the whole village hated Naruto. My family, who's supposed to be the police task force and protecting the people, were included to the mobs formed to attack one single child. I have also noticed that everyone was cold. Those who were showing kindness were being treated harshly, turning them into angry and heartless people. I have already imagined what would happen when I returned to Konoha for the exams, when I would see my old family. And I can no longer call them my family as I have decided that I am now a part of the Uzumaki clan, not the Uchiha. I am only starting to understand what you were talking about, but now I am sure in my answer. I will be choosing the path of destruction. I will become a part of Konoha's destruction. The sage nodded, satisfied with his answer. It was Hinata who spoke next. I too also came from Konoha. I was from a clan where the same family members are being enslaved, and that was the one thing I hated the most about the Hyuga. During the time I was still heiress, it was my dream to abolish the caged bird seal and merge both houses into one. When my title of heiress was put at stake, I had to fight for my clan. Sadly, I lost. The worst part was, the same people whom I aimed to save were the ones to drag me down. My decision stands with the beliefs of the Uzumaki clan. I will be passing judgment by choosing to destroy. Hagoromo nodded approvingly. Now they were looking at Naruto, waiting for his judgment. The world has been imbalanced indeed, since the beginning of the Great Shinobi Wars. Koona, Kumo, Kiri, and Iwa have played their parts to it. Even our ally, Suna, who condemned their own by making an incomplete sealing of a demon inside a child. Konoha have done atrocities that I myself have experienced. I was the village's scapegoat. Kumo have been kidnapping children and raising them as their own to make their expendable weapons, also making the kidnapped children breeding factories in the future. Kiri. They were killing their own people. Iwa have produced the most number of rogue criminals. The elemental countries see Jinshiriki only as weapons. They shun them away and treat them wrongly for having a demon sealed inside them. Tailed beasts were also treated unkindly as they were sealed into humans meant for war. There are a lot more bad things that have happened and will continue if my clan doesn't act sooner. My choice, obviously, is to maintain peace. By maintaining peace, there have to be a sacrifice. Peace can be also attained even if it means by destroying. Very well. You three have chosen to gain peace by forging the path of destruction. As I've said, whether you choose to preserve or to destroy, I will be guiding you. Hinata, you have been meditating for a week, trying to unlock your eyes. I'm very impressed you and your mother figured it out. You will receive your inheritance once you turn 18. For now, I will be upgrading your eyes to the Densegan. You will understand what it is once you unlock it. You. Sasuke, have been also training your Mengeku Sharingan. In order to help you with Konoha's destruction, I will be giving you the eternal Mengeku Sharingan to keep you from going blind and to also use your eye to its full potential. You will be unlocking your gift once you turn 18 as well. 
Lastly, Naruto. Your Rinnegan have been dormant even though you were able to use it twice before. I will be unlocking it now for you to get used to it. The destruction of Konoha is not the only thing that's going to happen. Be prepared. You will unlock the rest of your gifts once I deem you fit to use it. Now, you have been asking yourselves why I chose you. It's simple, really. Uzumaki Hinata and Uzumaki Sasuke, you two are the reincarnation of my children. Hinata, who have descended from both Senju and Uzumaki, you possess the soul of Asura. While you, Uzumaki Sasuke, who have descended from both Uchiha and Uzumaki, are the reincarnation of Indra. The three children were silent as they stared at the sage. Hagoromo closed his eyes and when he opened them, they were now different from being purple. His eyes were now red. The ripple patterns were still there but on it were nine black tomos. Once again he spoke in a riddle-like and sagely manner. Otsutsuki Senju Uzumaki Namikaze Naruto, you have chosen your path. You have made your answer. You have won against your inner self. You won't be needing to go on to the second and third stage to become the perfect Jinchuriki. For you have already mastered your training. All you have to do is befriend the remaining Baijus. This is my first task for you to do. I still don't understand, said Naruto. You will, in time. For I am you. You are my reincarnation. You are the second coming of the Rikidu Senin. Exit Mindscape. Back to the island Arashi and the three other Jinchuriki watched nervously as they waited for Naruto to finish his battle against his inner self. Gara, Fu, and Utakata have already finished theirs long ago. Just then, they saw Naruto's body glow and emit a red pulse of chakra, making them step backwards. He sent out a total of six chakra blasts before the glow around his body died out. After the sixth pulse, they noticed Naruto's hair color change into a shade of red, like Kushina's. It was at this moment Naruto began to open his eyes, revealing purple ringed ones. Everyone hold hands while I contact the rest of the family, I have some things to show you, Naruto stated as he stood up, his eyes making contact with theirs. Time skip, one week Ozoshio Gakur Ozukage office mission success, Ozukage Sama. Sky country and its people have been eliminated. The island had been destroyed into rubble while the fleet had been captured and is being brought to first city for further research. Kanahangakur Hokage office what do you mean nothing? Hiruzen shouted. Jiraiya cowered in fear as he felt his sensei's killing intent. He knew that his sensei knew about him stalling, visiting a few hot springs to peep. Eh? Sensei, I mean, when I arrived at the place where the floating city was spotted, I found nothing. There was also no fleet below. I investigated the path it took, and there were traces of destroyed and fallen rubble. Obviously there had been a battle, that I strongly believe. But there were no corpses. I do believe they have been taken care of as well by whomever attacked them. The Hokage took calming breaths as he sat down, thinking. Have you made any investigation about their sudden disappearance? Who do you think attacked them? I'm sorry sensei, but I have no answer to that. Sky is the only known nation who has an air force. But do not worry, I've already tasked my spy network to figure it out. That won't be necessary, someone said as the door of the office opened, revealing a bandaged man. Donzo. What do you mean? Asked Hiruzen. Have you seen the newest movie yet? I have no time to watch movies. I'm already busy because of the upcoming event. Then make time. Watch this movie. It was recorded and really happened. I've already made an investigation about the movie producer and found out just now that it was indeed based on a real story, especially the battle. What are you talking about? What is this movie? The movie is entitled, The Missing Snow. It was made available for viewing just this morning and is already climbing to the top list. I strongly suggest for the whole council to watch it. Very well, I trust your word. This must be very important for you to endorse it and ask the whole council to watch. Send an anbu for me once you've watched it. We will have a meeting after, Donzo said as he exited the office. Hmm, I wonder. Mused the Hokage as he began puffing smoke. Kumagakura Yugito. Remember your duty. You fully transforming into Nibi will be the signal for our invasion to start. L and M will be your teammates during this mission. B's team will be entering the exams as well. Make Kuma proud and show the world of our strength. I'm counting on you. Hi. Reikage Sama. Iwagakura Roshi. Hun. You will be acting as Jonin Sensei of the other two Janon teams. Kurotsuchi, make sure you make Konoha see their mistake of blackmailing us. Destroy their Janins. Show no mercy. Akatsuchi, make sure my granddaughter performs her duty. Hi, Tsuchikage Sama. Kiragakura Chojuro, be more confident. H. Hi, Mizukage Sama. I will de do my be best. Good. Now, lead your teammates to victory. 
Time skip, two weeks Kanahagakura no Sato Izumo and Kotetsu yawned as they watched people come and go. Due to the incoming event, security had been tightened and so the two gate guards were joined by six more. The two stood in attention as the hidden Anbu alerted them about incoming visitors. The gate guards waited in silence as they approached the gate. There were 12 of them and all of them were wearing red hooded cloaks with gold swirls. They immediately recognized them as the group from Uzu. As they arrived at the reception desk, they removed their cloaks. As the sun reflected, the guards noticed their unique hit hiates. The cloth was royal red while the plate was gold. The Ozoshiogaku or swirl could be easily seen because of the crimson red engraving. The Konoha guards immediately recognized the one who was the exact replica of the Yondame Hokage, with the additional three whisker marks on each cheek. Naruto was wearing dark red armor. In the front of the chest plate was the Senju clan symbol while in the back was the Uzumaki clan symbol. Beneath the armor, he was wearing the standard Senju clothing. Naruto's usually unkempt hair was running down smoothly through his shoulders, resembling his Tahashiramas. Next they recognized was the banished Uchiha. Like Naruto, Sasuke was wearing dark red armor and beneath it was the regular Uchiha clothing. In front of the chest plate was the Uchiha crest and the Uzumaki at the back. His long hair was untied making it look like Madara's. Hinata and the rest wore their usual attire. Although on top of their regular clothing, they were all wearing royal red long vests, the Uzumaki crest in gold, stitched in each side of the front vest and one at the back. Beneath their clothing, everyone including Naruto and Sasuke wore a full body chain mail applied with seals making it extremely light and comfortable and yet very strong, for added protection. Additionally, the chain mail could only be seen by the wearer. A crowd of Konoha citizens and shinobi was starting to gather at the gate and were ogling at the Yozashiya party. Most of the higher ranking shinobi were eyeing Naruto and Sasuke, mainly because they looked like Senju Hashirama and Uchiha Madara. You two realize you just made yourselves a bigger target, right? What happened to laying low? Asked Hinata through their mental link, making the others snicker. Don't blame me, it was Naruto's idea. Sasuke defended. Yeah, and you were enthusiastic with the idea anyway snorted naruto well it's really cool i know anyway it's just right we're both descendants of konoha's founders you have the eternal mungeku i have the makutan release it's just perfect and ironic since we will be destroying this place later anyway i'm starting to feel uncomfortable with them ogling at us if you will notice there's a crowd gathering here and it's growing i might just activate my tensegan and begin blasting people said hinata Mio and Miho were aware of this and decided to break the silence before the three started killing people. Ever since the sage visited them, the three became more interested in reigning death and destruction. They figured it was because of the path they have chosen. Ehem. Mio coughed. We're here for the Chunin exams. Here are our passes, said Miho. Oh. Yeah. Right, Izumo said as he was awakened from his stupor. Just please sign with your names here and you may enter, said Kotetsu. After the Yozoshia party finished logging in, they began marching inside the city to look for a hotel to check in. As they walked past the crowd, they heard whisperings and murmurings. Most of it coming from the younger ones. Did you see him? Yes. It's him. He played an important role in the ending of Princess Gale. Yeah. He was also one of the actors in the movie The Missing Snow. Whoa, do you think he's giving away autographs? The adults, on the other hand, were openly pointing at Naruto while the others also noticed the twins, muttering things such as them being the Yondaime's children. Whoa! What happened to Demon Breath? Naruto asked. We're not sure, Atoto. Replied Miho. Just try not to kill them yet, alright? We'll have time for that later, said Mio. Yeah, alright, I'll try. Konoha's rookie 9 happened to be at the barbecue restaurant and noticed the Yozoshio group passing. Hey guys, look, said Tenten, pointing at the visitors. It's Sasuke-kun. Squealed Sakura. He's such a hottie now, said Dino. HN. So, that Naruto is also participating with the exams. I wonder how strong he is. Mused Sasami. He's just an actor, Sasami-chan. I'm way stronger than him. Boasted Kiba. Kiba, just because he's an actor it doesn't mean he's already weak. Remember Kakashi-sensei's words to look underneath the underneath. He could be very strong, said Shino. It is by fate for us to be fighting against each other in the battlefield. This time, I will be sure to avenge my father, Neji said as he stared at Hinata's back. Troublesome. Muttered Shikamaru. Choji didn't say anything as he was too busy eating barbecue while the others weren't looking. Unknown location The eight remaining Jinka Arikis will be gathering at Konoha. 
Once the exams are over, we will attack them while they are still recovering after the fighting. Here are your assigned targets. The masked man said as he gave his followers folders. Understood, Madara-sama. Zetsu, how's our army? In two weeks, they will be ready Madara-sama. I'm already modifying their bodies to be able to fight and think strategies. Good. Soon, the fourth shinobi war will begin. Hokage-sama, all representatives from other countries who will be judging have just arrived and are now complete. They are now being escorted to their respective hotel rooms. A Chunin said as he entered the office. With him were three more Chai Yunins. Good. Please deliver these papers to their rooms. One envelope for each judge. Hiruzen replied as he motioned at the four three-foot-tall stacks of envelopes. The envelopes contained the grading sheets, which will be used by the panelists as they judge each candidate while watching the exams. These delegates came from various countries outside Fire Country. They will be the ones judging the Chunin hopefuls for the first and second part of the exam. At the final part, they will be handing their reports over to their respective daimyos as the daimyos will be the ones to judge during the finals. Since the event is being broadcast, it will be easier for everyone to see and judge the competitors' skills. Whether the examinees make it to the finals, which will be a tournament, doesn't actually matter since they might still get promoted if they have showed the skills a Chunin must have during the first and second part of the exam. Yakushi Residence, Underground Location, the communication seals should last for a month. I'll renew it before the third part of the exam. Now, raise your hands if you can hear me, Naruto said, talking the last part using the mental link. The teams from Mazushio, Suna, and Sound raised their hands as they heard Naruto's voice. Alright. Try communicating with your teammates and the other teams. Naruto ordered. After some time, they finally finished testing and were all good to go. While they were doing this, Naruto of course provided the clones and henched them as the others while their teams met as they cannot risk being caught missing. Alright. Now that's taken care of, I would like to remind the students and their and senseis to remind their students about the exam. Since it will be broadcast, we cannot use Jutsus our countries or clans consider unique and original, as there is the huge risk of other countries copying it. Began Miho. Suna of course will mostly be using wind Jutsus and puppetry, as it is their expertise. I would like to remind them and especially Gar's team to only use common wind Jutsus, while the sound teams will be mainly using sound techniques which will be quite difficult to copy. Although I would like to advise them to keep the process of casting them subtle. Those from Azushio will have no problem since our Jutsus are not meant for normal people as our chakra reserves are high, said Mio. Furthermore, I'm sure you have all trained to perform Jutsus with reduced seals, one-handed seals, or seal less seals while at Uzu. Being able to having this skill is critical in order to prevent Jutsu theft. Other than that, there will be no problems if you're using your Kake Genkai as it is not possible to copy. Finish to Nakata. Are we all, clear? Hi. Replied all. Good. I will be transporting you back to your respective hotel rooms and dispel your clones, said Naruto as he produced Uzumaki clones. As the teams left, the Yozukage's children remained behind. Kabuto ni, no no chan. Orders from the Yozukage? Yeah. We need the new schedule for the guard shifts and patrols. They changed it today, correct? The base seals needs to be written around the village and on the walls within this week. Can I have it before midnight? Alright. We'll work on it. We'll see you later. Time skip, one week, tuning exams opening commentators box greetings to everyone participating and watching the exams here or via streaming. I am Kamazuki Izumo, and I am Hagane Kotetsu, and we are the Immortal Chai Yunins. And will be the hosts for this year's Chunin exams and first ever live telecast. And since this is the first ever live telecast Chunin exams, almost every ninja village have sent teams to represent their home. Your right partner, this year. There are a total number of 96 teams who are participating. Wow, that's 288 Janan hopefuls. Let us now see what's going on in the stadium as Morino Iviki gives his introductions before the event starts. Stadium right. As everyone know, or if you're not yet aware, the Chunin exams was made after the war. The Chunin exams is not just an event where Janan participate in order to achieve the rank of Chunin. This exam is also an alternative for war. While we consider this a tournament, this is an alternative for war. And so that means you brats can go murder each other to your heart's content without hurting the other village's feelings. Iviki finished as he started laughing evilly. Great. You all hear me? That's enough introductions. Time for the first part of the exam. As he said it, a war horn blasted a deep and long sound, signaling the start of the event. You, Iviki shouted, pointing at the Janan teams. I am your cage. 
and our country is now at war. The enemy has vital information and weapon that can be used against us. Your primary task is to infiltrate the enemy camp, identify the item, and bring it back to our base. Your secondary task is to gather information about everything in their base. Intelligence reports that we have five days before enemy reinforcements arrive and finally launch an attack. Failure to complete the mission puts our side at risk, giving us a high chance of getting slaughtered. Iviki indicated to a glass bowl that contained scrolls. The scrolls contained the mission details and a random item that the team shall retrieve. Iviki then shunned away from the stadium and went to the spectator's seats. The teams took this as a cue and so a representative for each team picked a scroll. Teams POV hmm, so this exams a war simulation. Interesting. Naruto thought as he picked a scroll. He returned to his team and together, they read the scroll's contents. Objective, from the stadium, head to the Hokage Mountain where the enemy camp is located. Once you have the item and the intel, head towards the Forest of Death and find a safe spot that will serve as your camp. Once there, the retrieved item will turn into a scroll that contains information about the second part of the exam. Time limit, 5 days quest item, random for each team, 3 pronged kunai. Naruto nodded to his teammates and began heading towards the Hokage Mountain. The other teams doing the same soon as they finished reading their scroll. Judges POV each judge was given papers so they could grade the participants. The papers also contained more information about the exam. The judges began reviewing the grading sheets as the exam participants headed towards their first destination. Chunin exams part 1 skills to be graded, espionage, infiltration, assassination, retrieval, escape objective, each team is assigned an item to retrieve. The item is located inside a fortress filled with enemy nins and numerous traps. The fortress has numerous rooms. The teams must locate and retrieve their assigned item within 5 days, while also gathering information. Maximum time limit, 5 days grading sheet, team name, team members, espionage, infiltration, assassination, retrieval, escape, espionage, correct number of enemy nins in the base, correct number of enemy nins per rank, estimated number of traps, trap locations, base weaknesses, base strengths, camp outline, team's overall rating, individual's overall rating. Remarks, normal POV commentators box and there are contestants go, Izumo said. Day 1. 96 teams. Now this is an interesting start. We'll see later which teams will advance to the second part, said Kotetsu. Very interesting indeed. Viewers, let us show you what the team scroll says so you'll have an idea what exactly they are supposed to do, Izumo said as he motioned at the cameraman to focus on a scroll he opened similar to the ones the teams picked. As you can see. Those teams who will fail to retrieve their assigned items are automatically disqualified at the exam since they will need that item in order to proceed to the second part, said Kotetsu. Teams POV Yuzu, Sound, and Suna teams alright. Did everyone understand the unspoken objective? There was a double meaning, said Naruto through the mental link as he and his team ran towards the Hokage Mountain. Which one, Senpai? Asked Zaku. Intelligence gathering. The obvious one was gathering intel from the base at the mountain. The unspoken and hidden objective was to gather intel from the other teams. This is only the first part of the exam, on the second or third part teams will have to face one another in order to advance. Which is why we need to gather intel. We were given, 5 days to complete the mission. This isn't just about being fast to retrieve the set item. Well said senpai, said dosu. Team dojutsu, any intel about the Hokage mountain? Asked Fu. We only know that the Hokage's heads were carved there. Aside from that. I've got none, said Sasuke. I used to stay at the heads but I've never noticed other things on top of the mountain, said Naruto. We're getting near. Let me check. Byakugan. The teams remained quiet and waited for Hinata's report as they started climbing the mountain. Around them were the other teams from the other villages also trying to scale the terrain. After a while, Hinata spoke again. From what I can tell the buildings here are new. Most likely built for the exams. Tread carefully now. I see a lot of traps. The safe places where we could make camp and observe the other teams are the forests behind the building, around 200 meters away. Right. Thanks Hinata-chan. Everyone, head to the said location and make camp. Secure the perimeter. Konoha teams While the teams from the three villages were working together, the Konoha teams have decided to work on their own. Team 7 was the first to arrive at the location, followed by Team 9. Last to arrive was Team Tanishikamaru thought the exam was too troublesome while Kuji followed his lead while eating chips. Team 7 ha! We arrived first. We beat them, yelled Kiba. Shut up mutt. 
We're supposed to spy here, not announce our presence, said Sasami. Who you calling mutt, you red-eyed freak? Kiba, shut up. Sasami is right. We need to keep low, said Shino. Akamaru barked in agreement, making his master become serious. They used their noses and began to sniff the air around them as they secured their location. Shino raised his arms as swarms of bugs came from his jacket, flying towards the building to scout. Sasami once again opened their scroll and reviewed it. Right. The place is covered by layers of gene jutsus. I see a lot of traps. Also, inside the buildings, there are also gene jutsus in each room. Our mission item is a tonfa. Shino, have your bugs look for it. I believe there are multiple tonfas here but only one is real, said Sasami, her fully matured Sharingan spinning. We'll scout for today and tomorrow. We'll take the tonfa on the third day. Shino, have your bugs check the perimeter around us first. See if we can camp here. Team 9 Byakugan. Neji-kun, what do you see? Asked Sakura in a very girlish manner. A building. And a lot of traps. Neji replied dramatically. Wow, gee, thanks Captain Obvious. Replied Tenten, annoyed. Our item is a Tantu, can you see it? Of course, I can. The Byakugan is a strong dojutsu. It has a 360 degree vision which the Uchiha doesn't have. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Just tell us the plan. Right. Neji nodded as he closed his eyes and folded his arms. The building is full of traps as well as enemy nins. There are at least 50 Jounin level nin, 150 Chounin, and about 300 Jinan level. The Jinins, or low level ones, I believe are only clones created by those with higher chakra levels. There is an item for each floor. I cannot tell which one the original is. I will have to be closer. For now, you two take down notes as I dictate details about the place. We will take the Tanta later after some teams have decided to attack and dispelled about 50 of the clones. Alright, sighed Tenten. A great plan, Neji Kun. Squealed Sakura. Yeah, I'm such a genius. Neji proudly thought to himself. Team 10 alright, here's the plan. Began Shikamaru. We'll gather intel today and the next day. On the third day, we'll retrieve the chakram and head to the forest. We'll let the impatient teams rush on and activate some of the traps while also defeating proctors. That will lessen our problems once we make a go for our target. We'll set up camp here. Eno, there's a Chinese nearby. I'm going to trap her with my shadow. You possess her once she's immobile. Then you go snooping around for some intel. This will be the routine, you possess a Chinese and gather intel. After 4 hours, you make the Chinese return here with the intel while Kuji gets rid of the Chinese. You'll have an hourly interval so you could rest before you possess another Chunin. Here she comes. Cage Mei no Jutsu. Shadow Possession Technique, Shintenshin no Jutsu. Mind Transfer Technique, Teammate Sai along with Fu and Torune have already acquired their target item, which was a sealing brush. Being one of the elite Rudonbu has its perks. The three discreetly created clones and had them act like they weren't done with the mission yet. The real them went to a place where cameras had a blind spot and sent intel to Naruto's team. Uzu and company's POV we have a problem. I sense a total of 469 chakra signatures, while about 200 are clones. What if there were more earlier? We're supposed to add even the number of clones, said Karen. Don't worry, Karen-chan. We got that covered, Naruto said. Speaking of intel, here it is. He informed the others as an ink mouse discreetly approached him from the bushes and transformed into a scroll. Normal POV John and Sensei's lounge what is this? There are clones. How are the Jinnins supposed to know the actual number of the people stationed there as well as their original number before the clones got dispelled? One Jounin Sensei from Taki said. Don't worry about that. Even if they don't get the correct info about the base they could still move forward to the second part as long as they have the item they're supposed to retrieve. The intel was just a bonus. Iviki informed them. Hey! So Naruchan got it right. There was a hidden objective. The true meaning of the second objective was to gather intelligence from the other teams. Thought Miho. Mio, Utakata, Baki, and Kimimaro simply smiled at Miho's comment, also proud of the boy. Exam first part, second day team's POV Uzu team and company whose team is Nirakumo team? Asked Naruto. My team, said Fu. They're 42 meters south from our position. One of them has very large chakra reserves, said Karen. It's her team then, good. Keep an extra eye out for them. The blonde girl, Niyugito, is the Jinchuriki of the Nibi. Roger that, Naruto-senpai, said Lee. Good. 
Aside from the Nibijan Shurikis team, we'll also look out for the Hachibijan Shurikis Janan team. One of them's a guy with a lollipop, next is a girl with a flat chest, the last is another girl but with huge chests. Wow, of all the description you could provide, you go with their chests, said Sasuke, making everyone laugh. Ah, well, it's noticeable. Anyway, another team to watch out for is the Tsuchikija's granddaughter. They're actually down in. Another one is the Taki team. Waterfall only sent one. But intelligence believe that the members brought heroes water. But they will die. What the hell were they thinking? Asked Fu. Oh. Right. Well, it would only seem that they still do not know that only Jinchuriki can drink it without dying. Unless they've sent Jinka or Rikis, which I highly doubt. They may not use it yet. Probably in the finals. So, we'll watch out for them still. Next that we need to watch out for is the team from Kiri. Look out for the guy with the bandaged sword. He and his team should be strong since they're already high Chaunin back in their village. Apparently, Mist have forged a new Haram Kare for the kid named Chojuro. He was an apprentice of the original Seven Swordsmen. Lastly, of course, is Konoha's Rookie 9. While some of them are dumb, they'll most likely make it to the second part. Their senseis were elite Jounin after all. Aside from the said teams, the rest are cannon fodder. They're nobodies. Feel free to murder them. But those I mentioned will have to be killed by us during the final part of the exam. Commentators box good day everyone and welcome to the second day of the Chunin exam's first part, said Izumo. Here is a recap of yesterday's events. Trailed off Kotetsu. 15 teams have already been eliminated due to them being unable to continue after triggering and falling victim to the area's numerous traps. That leaves us 81 teams. Wow, almost a sixth have already been out on the first day. Yes, and now back to the exams. Team 10's POV Choji, wake up. Ino's back. Drawled Shikamaru as the body of the Chaunin Ino possessed walked towards them carrying a scroll. What's that? The intel we needed to get. Replied Ino with the voice of the Chaunin she was possessing. I managed to take one from their office. It wasn't guarded, really. There were 95 other scrolls similar to it laying on a huge desk, I made a count. It is similar to the number of teams participating in the exams. Here, take it. Shikamaru nodded as caught the Chaunin's shadow and made him give the scroll to Ino as she returned to her body. Choji, you're up. Right. Nikuden Sencha. Human bullet tank, the Chaunin literally turned into mush as Kuji hit him. A mud clone, huh? Troublesome. Anyway, great work, Ino. Rest for now. Later, begin looking for the chakram. We'll retrieve it tomorrow. Hmm. If the intel about this place was already provided, then what was the point of having us gather intel? Troublesome. Uzu team and company update, said Tuya. What is it? Konoha's Inoshikachos made a discovery about the intel here, said Shien. I had a vision for their team. I saw the possessed Chaunin take a scroll from the 96 laid on the desk. Upon further inspection, it appeared to be the intel for this place. Hmm, so I was right then. The actual intelligence gathering was to be from the opposing teams, not the place. Anyway, listen up, everyone. We'll have to take the intel scroll, but we'll keep what we have already. We don't want people getting suspicious about us. Just pretend that we do not know about it and act surprised when we find the intel scroll. We'll make our move once the teams we're watching have taken their items. If they ask why we have two, we tell them the one was already given while the other intel we have gathered ourselves was more reliable than the given since it could contain false intel anyway. Got it. Exam first part, third day commentator's box good morning world, said Kotetsu. Here's yesterday's recap, said Izumo. 13 more teams have been eliminated. And so that leaves us 68 teams. Now, back with the contestants. Team 7 my bugs have found a room with more than 80 scrolls with similar content. It has the intel we need about this facility. The office had no guards nor traps. It appears that we were meant to have it, said Shino. Ha! That's good, exclaimed Kiba. Okay, we'll take that first. And then we go looking for the Tonfa, said Sasami. I wonder, why was the scrolls easy to find and unguarded while the item the teams needed are heavily protected? Mused Shino. Never mind that, let's get that Tonfa so we could proceed to the forest already, said Kiba impatiently. Team Nineji, if you're done being full of yourself, let's get a move on and retrieve that Dantu already, said Tenten. Neji was currently leaning against a tree with his eyes closed. Fate has decreed that I, the magnificent Hyuga-sama, will defeat the Uchiha by retrieving the item before she does. It is by fate that I will win this tournament, 
said Neji as he opened his eyes and began walking towards the facility, his Byakugan activated. Amen, said Sakura while nodding solemnly. She strongly believed that her crush was a prophet of fate. And so her feelings towards Neji grew stronger. Tenten simply rolled her eyes as she followed after her teammates and reminded them about the intel scroll that Neji happened to notice last night while scouting. Jounin Sensei's lounge and you call the Hyuga genius? Asked by Wani with Jounin. I only see a sexually confused boy with a long pole stuck up his arse, said Akumo Jounin. My student has yet to show his youthfulness. Don't worry, exclaimed Guy as he gave the two senseis the thumbs up with his teeth flashing. Team Uzu and company Konoha's Team 7 is on the move, said Gara. Team 9 is also on the move, said Dosu. Team 10 as well, said Tuya. Yugito's team is also on the move, said Fu. Kurotsuchi's team as well, said Naruto. Let us not forget the team whose one member's gifted with huge breasts, as Naruto said. Fuck off, Sasuke. Daki's team is also moving. Sakon and Ukon said. The Kiri team appears to be nervous. I can sense it from their chakra flow, Karen said. All right, Hinata, do it. Right. This will make you guys a bit dizzy at first. Get ready. Byakugan, shared vision. Thanks to her Tensegan, Hinata can now share what she sees with her Byakugan to others. The seal that made them talk to each other made the connection easier and more stable as normally Hinata would need to have physical contact first to the person she'll be sharing vision with. The technique had two abilities. The first one allows the user to share what she sees while the second ability grants other people to use the Byakugan. Fu, your turn. Release your bugs. Got it. Let's go, Chome. Millions of tiny bugs flew towards the building and entered. The bugs had the ability to share everything they hear. Simply put, it worked like a wireless radio with Fu being the main satellite. The technique will then allow their teams to hear everything inside the facility. It was a good combination with the Byakugan shared vision. Team 7 Team 7 came out of their hiding spot and approached the nearest entrance. The building had multiple openings so teams wouldn't cram themselves on a single door. As they got inside, they immediately found themselves surrounded by two Chunin squads. Sasami immediately started with the hand seals for a jutsu. Katan, Gokaku no jutsu. Fire style, great fireball technique, the Chunins jumped away but the two in the middle got caught by the great fireball. The six remaining Chai Yunins created distance as they began throwing kunai at the Jinan. Shino raised his arms as his swarm got in front and protected them from harm. The Chai Yunins then changed tactics and began throwing kunai, this time with explosive tags. Shino dispersed his swarm and let Sasumi in front to destroy the incoming projectiles. Fire Style Phoenix Flower Jutsu The small fireballs met the projectiles in midway and caused them to detonate. Smoke filled the area for a few moments, giving Kiba and Akamaru the chance to strike while the Chai Yunins were blinded. Gatsudga. Fang passing Fang, four of them got hit by the Cyclones while the remaining two were finished off by Sasami and Shino. Their way now cleared, they ran the hallways and noticed the doors for each room were labeled with the item they needed to acquire. They stopped when they saw the door labeled Tonfa. Sasami nodded to Shino as he ordered his bugs to open the door. They cleared out of the way as the bugs opened it. A volley of kunai immediately shot off from the room and pinned the opposite wall. Shino had his bugs look for more traps. Finding none, the team went inside. In there was the tonfa on top of a pedestal. There's a genjutsu here. Be alert, said Sasami. Kai. Sharingan activated, the genjutsu was released, revealing an empty pedestal. Let's go check the other floors, said Sasami as she and her team walked out of the room. They were on the ground floor. The building had 13 floors in total. Shino. Called Sasami as they were halfway to the second floor. The Abrame understood and had his bugs look for the room with the Tonfa while also watching out for more Procternins defending the base. Team 7 waited at the stairs while Shino made a quick sweep of the floor. After a while, the swarm returned. There are about 30 Chai Yunins in this room but are currently occupied, fighting the other teams. Near the Tonfa room, there are two Chai Yunins on the alert. Alright. Since you're the stealthy one in the team, assassinate them. Shino simply nodded as he sent out two bugs. The bugs entered the two Chai Yunin's ear and went to their brains. After a few minutes, the guards dropped to the ground, dead. With them dead, the Junins quickly rushed to the door labeled Tonfa. Like what they did on the first floor, Shino had his bugs open the door while they cleared out of the way. This time, however, instead of a kunai shooting off, a mechanism activated causing the wall opposite the door collapsing towards the Jinan. The Jinan had no choice but to enter the room to keep themselves from getting flattened. 
The door of the room automatically closed and then there was a low rumbling sound. With her Sharingan activated, Sasami quickly realized that the room was shrinking. Shit. Kiba, you're on. Right. Let's go, Akamaru. Gatsudga. The partners spun and hit the wall, causing cracks to appear on it, but did not break. They repeated the process two more times until the wall finally crumbled. Team 7 quickly got out before they were crushed by the now smaller room. Third floor. Let's go, Sasami said after they regained composure. They encountered no proctors and didn't activate any traps while at the third floor. They quickly found the room that had the label Tonfa on it. They got ready for another trap as they opened the door. Inside the room was a single Jounin guarding the room. Behind him was a pedestal with a Tonfa on top. Shino couldn't sense any traps and Sasami found no Genjutsu. I'll deal with him, Sasami said as her eyes morphed into a four-pointed star. Tsukuyomi. Two seconds later the Jounin dropped to ground drooling. Moments later its body turned into a puddle of water. Go retrieve the Tonfa, said Sasami as she dropped on one knee. Sasami, you alright? You went overkill with that water clone. Asked Shino. Yeah, don't worry about me. I'm not yet used with this technique, as this is my first time using it. But I'll be fine after some rest. I'll have my rest once we reach the forest, she said as she wiped her bleeding eyes. Wow, I didn't know the Sharingan had another level after the three Tomos said Kiba as he gave the tone for Dishino for safekeeping. HN, did you say something Kiba? Jown and Sensei's lounge damn you Kakashi and your hip attitude. Screen guy. Uchiha compound, theater room Fugaku-kun, why wasn't I told about this? How come Sasami-chan has them in Gekyu? Asked Mikado. I would like to know as well, said Itachi. Shisui, who was seating near them, listened. To be honest, Jiraiya, Sasami, and I only found out about it a day before the exam started. Started Fugaku. I had Jiraiya make her befriend someone during their three-month training. After that, Jiraiya orchestrated a situation to where Sasami had to kill that friend. However, we were disappointed when she didn't awaken the Mengeku. Two nights before the exam started, I found Sasami butchering a training dummy. When I asked what got her so riled up, she told me it was because of that failure, Sasuke, joining the exams. She told me that she wanted to destroy him with many people watching. It was at that moment I noticed her Sharingan looking different. It would seem that her Mangekyu's awakening had been delayed. But that is no longer a problem. As for her knowing that Tsukuyomi, remember that every Uchiha who have awakened their Mangekyu automatically knows about the techniques. They hear a whisper of the name while they subconsciously understand how it works and use it. Uzu team and company interesting, so she has the Mangekyu. It appears that she's only awakened it recently, said Sasuke. Team 9 Team 9 encountered the same traps as Team 7 on the first and second floors. On the third floor, they had to escape another fake room with a wasp hive. Tenten had to quickly summon a scroll full of scene buns in order to repel the incoming swarm. Sakura helped by throwing explosive tags at the swarm and finally, Neji put down the remaining ones by tapping them with chakra imbued fingers. As they reached the fourth floor, they were immediately engaged into battle by six Hyjian non-proctors. Tenten let out a widespread barrage of kunai, senbone, and other pointy objects, completely pelting two of the opponents and dispelling them. Sakura took care of the other two by bonking them on the head. It was a special taijutsu move of hers. It looked like a simple smack on the head but in fact it was actually deadly. She had years of practice by hitting her classmates at the academy. She was a violent fangirl. Her bullying punches became dangerous when she started training under Mito Guy. Neji easily danced around the remaining two, closing off their Tenketsu points and then finally giving them a tap in the nape, making them drop dead. Team 9 proceeded searching the hallways until they found the room labeled Tantu. When they opened it, they were greeted by three purple constrictors. Neji and Tenten were able to fend off and eventually defeat theirs, dispelling into puffs of smoke. They were obviously summons. Their final member was unfortunate as she was too shocked. The boa was already wrapping her body and will soon begin constricting her. Dengo shop in a Dengo shop, a certain recently promoted Dokubutsu Jounin was cackling with glee as she watched the pink-haired Jounin get eaten by her summon. Her Jounin peers who were also watching at the Dengo shop simply shook their heads in pity of Sakura. All Jounins with summoning contracts have been asked to help provide them for the tower's fourth floor. Team 9 simply had the luck of having to face Mitarashianko's snake summons. Back to Team 9 Neji frantically began tapping the constrictor to free his loyal follower. It wouldn't be good if he lost Sakura. She was the only one putting up with his weird attitude. As the boa puffed back to the summoning world, Neji crossed his arms, 
closing his eyes, and nodded to himself. He was such a hero. That was most youthful. Thank you, Neji Kun, said Sakura. Fate has decreed that I saved you today. All right, you two, let's head to the next floor, interrupted Denten. If she didn't, the two would have definitely began spouting about fate in the springtime of youth. As the team reached the fifth floor, it felt eerily quiet. Weird. There were no proctors nor traps, Neji already told them. See, fate has decreed that we find the Tonefa on the fifth floor. There are no guards. Nor any traps in Jinjutsus. This is it. Neji, I don't think fate has anything to do with this. There's something off on this floor. We need to skip to the sixth floor, said Denten. Even Sakura felt unnerved. Yeah, let's skip this floor. No. If there's something wrong, we still need to figure it out. We are shinobi. We'll just need to be careful, insisted Neji. Yeah, we'll be careful, agreed Sakura. They reached the room labeled Tantu and saw the item on top of a pedestal. They double-checked their surroundings for anything suspicious. Finding none, Sakura grabbed the Tantu. See? Fate has decreed that we find it. And now we are. Neji screamed as the Tantu and the floor of the room vanished without a sound. All members of Team 9 screamed as they fell from the fifth floor. At the bottom, thankfully was a sea of haystack high enough to cushion their fall. After quickly gathering themselves, they heard screaming and turned their heads in time to watch as another team fall down from a different hatch. It took them an hour and another 30 minutes to finally reach the sixth floor. Team 9 had to avoid conflict now and needed to save energy. Upon finally reaching the room, Team 9 knew they were on the correct floor this time now. There were no other traps but there was a Jounin guarding the Tantu. It is by fate that my team acquired the Tantu. Give up now. Neji told the Jounin who was guarding it. Tenten would normally roll her eyes but this time she took out all her scrolls and prepared for battle. Sakura also got ready to use her family jutsu. All three of them were still irritated by the sudden fall. Let me show you the power of youth, Neji said as he went to a stance. Jounin Sensei's lounge ah, there it is. Watch as my youthful student shine with the glorious fires of youth. Screamed Guy as he had the Iwa and Kumo Jounins in a headlock. Back to Team 9 there is no escape. You're trapped with us in this room, said Tenten as she opened her scrolls and threw them. Ninja art, trapping chain balls. Multiple chains with heavy balls attached to it launched towards the Jounin. Since they were in a special kind of room, the Jounin wasn't able to shun shine or Kawarimi and got hit by the chains. He was able to deflect and evade the incoming projectiles for the first three minutes but eventually got overwhelmed as Tenten's weapon supply seemed infinite. While the Jounin was busy untangling himself, Neji got behind him. You are within my range of youthful divination. Proclaimed Neji. Juke Nyo, Haki Raku Juayanchu. Gentle fist art, 8 trigrams 64 palms, as the Jounin lay on the ground writhing in pain after having his chakra points closed, the last member of the team stood in front of him. Finish him. Banshee art, Banshee princess. Sakura let out an ear-piercing wail and directed it towards the poor Jounin. The victim's eardrums popped due to the high-pitched waves of sound and later on began bleeding. The Jounin let out a grunt before he fell unconscious. Moments later, the Jounin turned into a rock. Finally claiming their prize, Team 9 escaped the tower and headed to the forest. Jounin Sensei's lounge what the hell was that? Exclaimed Kuranai. It was the Haruno family jutsu. The Banshee arts. Guy began explaining. For once, he talked normally. It was developed by her mother and was later completed by Sakura. The Haruno style uses high-pitched waves of sound. The sounds can be infused with chakra which can be used later as a genjutsu. It can be also used as an offensive type ninjutsu like the one she just showed us. Interesting, her clan would have been a good addition to Odogaka if they weren't originally from Konoha, said Kamimiro, getting the attention of the Jounins. You see. Since we were named Sound Shinobi, our village uses sound as our primary weapon. What the Haruno did was similar to one of our techniques, which you will see later from my Jinnins. Team 10 Team 10 didn't have much of a problem thanks to Shikamaru's plans. They simply chose to watch and observe the other teams enter rooms from the 1st to 6th floor. They found their chakram on the 7th floor. They easily took care of the Jounin with their family's combination attack. Yugita's Team Kitten, show them our power. Crush those Konohanin and get that capsule. Lily, Mimi, let's go get that capsule. Roger. Katan, Nazumi Dema, Fire Style, Mouse Hairball, Lightning Style, Chain Lightning. Lightning Style, Lightning Flash. Nine Chunin clones dropped to the ground as they were hit by the attack. 
The Nibi Jinshuriki had her claws out and was literally tearing through the enemy lines as they charged towards the room where the capsule they were needed to take was located. Hmm, Lily, Mimi, you take the capsule and watch out for more traps. I'll handle the jown and guarding it, said Yugito. Team Samui Samui's team easily weaved their way towards their item which was a scarf. They didn't use any jutsus as they were good with their katanas. Their sensei, Killer B, was a kenjutsu master, after all. Why is this so easy? Mused Amoe. What if there's a trap for it being too easy? What if when we enter the room to where the scarf was located we get ambushed and never return to Kumo? What if shut up Amoe? Screamed Kuro. Guys, bickering is not cool. We got the scarf. Let's head to the forest, said Samui. Kurotsuchi's team being a team of Jounins, Kurotsuchi and her teammates easily retrieved their designated item which was a red pouch. They stormed the building after spying at the Konoha teams. Only her and Yugito's team aside Naruto were able to grasp the hidden meaning about the said intelligence gathering. What they forgot to take into consideration was to spy at the Uzu, Otto, and Suna teams. They were too focused about the upcoming invasion. Chujuro's team due to him having low self-esteem issues, he wasn't able to properly lead his team. And so, when they began to look after their assigned item, they were caught by multiple traps. At first, they were able to form a nice plan and bid their time. When they finally moved, all of them got too nervous. Now they were disqualified. Uzu team and company alright everyone, our watch has ended. Let's go get our assigned items and head towards the forest. We'll evaluate them later once we make camp for the exam second part, said Naruto. The Uzu, Otto, and Suna team simultaneously came out of their hiding places and infiltrated the facility, looking for their assigned item while silently assassinating people, be it proctors or other teams. Normal POV the first part of the exam went on smoothly without problems. On the third day, seven teams have been disqualified. Five more at the fourth, and three at the last. There were now 53 teams left. Uzushi Ogakura Main City Ozuka Joffice remember, you'll play the film at the first advertisement during the third part of the exam, said Kushina. The film they were going to show was in fact, Naruto's memories back when he was still in Konoha. Due to the wonders of sealing, they were able to extract and make a copy of his memories and placed it into a scroll. Later on, with the help of Goku's movie company they were able to convert it into a film. Now they just had to show the world of Konoha's treatment to Naruto. The second one was the son Daime's betrayal to the Uzumaki. The memory was extracted from Akumo Jounin who was the Reikage's advisor during the second Shinobi War. Understood, Uzukage sama Begin parsing with Konoha's satellite. Notify me when the controls have been overwritten. Kumagakura Reikage's office you know, Kiri's still weak compared to our villages. Began Onoki. What are you trying to say? Asked A. After the invasion, Kiri will have lesser numbers. We can invade it next. Hmm, it sounds tempting. I will think about it. That's it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and follow me on my other social media accounts. Anime God here, and I'm signing off.